Hello, Mr. Lowry. Hello. Yeah. You hey, you had text me about the test, right? Uh, yes, sir. I emailed you. Right. Uh, I, I just uh, left a webinar. I found out that it's a specific URL for 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 different uh, institutions and whatnot, and you can't just go online and download responders. Okay. So, so what I did, and I said, I'll tell the class once everybody else get in because I got in late. Uh, I, I, I put an announcement uh, in Canvas about uh, that that uh, has the information and the link that you need to follow. It's got okay. a, 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 a video that you can watch, and then it has a, uh, a, a, a download link to click on. And, and I'll explain it to everybody. What happens is, uh, basically, you're going to have to close out all of your uh, uh, web browser software, pretty much get out of all the different applications that you have loaded, pretty much. Uh, but it'll tell you when you try to uh, run the uh, responders. So it's going to allow you to download the file, then load the, the responder software. The responder software is like a web browser. And what happens is uh, it's going to, when you, you're going to have to go to like the start menu of Windows or whatever, uh, whatever a software you have, and then uh, click on that link, click on the responders uh, link or application. And it's going to open up like a browser and it should have like the word canvas at the top. Mm -hmm. And it, it, so it's going to kind of put you in that canvas environment where you can see all of the tests or quizzes that are available, you know, and you can uh, click on that uh, the, that test, and then it's going or should work through responders in that. Okay. Yeah, and like I said, I'm 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 uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna do it once class over. I'm gonna go through responders and, and see if I could do it as, as a uh, from the student view also. But that's what they say uh, need needs to be done. So, well, hopefully so we that. Have, so we have Chris today. Uh, well, wh whatever I had, the test I know was uh, scheduled by one o'clock, but I, I just kind of pushed it back. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to push it back till like, say the whole weekend. So like I said, I won't hold you liable because it wasn't available. I'm going to open it up and push it back. Cause I think we had what chapter of uh, four tests, quiz and tests. And I think I had an and or quiz and a it was another quiz I think I posted that I posted for you to take. All right, but they I don't think they were under the lockdown browser. You know, the only I think the only one was under the lockdown browser was the test. The and or quiz. Is, it was also uh yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So what I I'm gonna open all, all of them up until the end of the uh end of the week, like say well the weekend, you know, into the weekend. All right. Yeah, so we tell everybody else come or anybody else comes in. Cause y'all uh, did y'all sign the roll? Ooh, not yet. I should do that. Uh -oh. Let me share the screen. Um there you go here. Yeah. Sure. Wait, sorry. Another question is like uh -huh. mm, the if we take test, we have to have camera. Uh the not this test, the uh, the uh, final exam. Okay. Yeah. If, if you have a webcam in your laptop, it should work. Right, but the thing is, it's it's not required for. I, I won't make it required for the regular test. All right. No, like me, I I don't use laptop normally, right. so I don't have camera. Oh, there's, right there's not a camera on top of the uh, web uh, of your laptop. No, 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 no. I mean, uh, never mind, never mind. <laughs> right. See, normally, you normally, not all laptops, but most of the newer laptops have the little webcam. Yeah, I know, but like desktop is no. 
like no camera for desktop. Like the the PC. Oh, it's oh, not yeah. laptop. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Normally, the, you uh, oh, you have a desktop. Yes. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Yeah, you need a webcam. I have an iPad. I don't know if I could take it on there, but I use a desktop for everything else. Like I have to yeah. use my phone. Use yeah, computer. not a. I... Oh. Say that again, Miss uh, Sterling. I have to use my phone to be able to hear the audio from this desktop. Oh, so I'm yeah. Using, I'm right. using the desktop to see you, but I don't have a camera on it, no. <laughs> oh, yeah. But, but, but what happens with uh, the lockdown browser is you must be uh, connected. Your test must be connected with all of the devices. So that, that see, that, that's what's going to be a problem with Miss uh, Miss Zhu. Because uh, if, if she log in, and they don't support the cell phone either, but say she log in with the tablet, she's going to have to take the test from the tablet, you know, like the yeah. iPad, yeah, from the iPad. She won't be able to say, okay, I could connect from the iPad, then now I'm going to go to my, my computer and take the test, and the iPad can watch. No, it, the, the, it has to be connected. I plan to take this test today from the desktop, then I should be able to do that much. Can I try it early. No, I, 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 I can, go ahead. What you say? Today's test, I could use my desktop without a webcam, right? Yeah, right, right. Only the final. Okay. Only the final going to be uh, set up that way to where uh, you're going to have to use a, a webcam. Cause see what they want us to be able to proctor it. And see the thing is, well, I was how would I say it? They were saying we would need we would either have to proctor all of the tests in that uh somewhat like this, but then you would still have to have a, a camera where I have to be able to see, physically see everybody taking the test, or we could do it with the video. Uh, through uh, responders, and I can just check the videos to see if there's any violations after the fact or whatever, where people can take them at different times. You got what I'm saying? So that that's one of the things. Yeah. yeah uh, so I have a way to do the final exam, but I want to be able to do today's test, which I did download the browser, but it no. didn't want to launch Right. Oh, See, yeah. I, I just left a web, webinar, like I was telling Mr. Uh, Lowry. Uh, I, I have to give you a specific web link to responders that associates with BRCC's Canvas. You understand? Even if you knew somebody who was at a different school and they gave you that download link, that's only pertaining to that particular school, so it would not work. So what I'll do, well, what I did was I created a, a, an announcement in Canvas of a, a video that you watch and uh, the download link, which is the specific link for uh, BRCC. You download it, and what it is, it's the browser is what it what is called a browser. So when you actually launch it from 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 Windows. You're gonna have to close out Chrome and everything else like that. Most of the uh, most of the web applications, and you uh, go to your uh, start menu and you and you open up uh, the application responders. And what's gonna happen is gonna give you a desktop, but you won't be able to open up any other uh, tabs. And it's gonna have Canvas at the top, but you're gonna see all your Canvas tests and quizzes that's all available. And then you could take them uh, through the responders. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But if you look at that, uh, that that if you go to um, if you go to um, announcements, you should see that link that I just put out there. That yeah, response. Yeah, and see that first link is a video. That second link is the uh, responders download. And it's going it's going to be it's going to look exactly like the download you just did. So what you may want to do is uninstall and I'll I'll just it. yeah, uninstall the other one before you install that one so hopefully it'll right over you know really write out what it's supposed to. Cuz sometimes yeah, this one's work. 
Before I I tried oh, another one, like I tried right. so hard, you know. All right. So this one <laughs> so does work. work. Okay. Yeah. All right. So what I'll do, I know I put it in announcements. I might I might send it also in an email telling them disregard because some people don't look at announcements. So I'll do that too. I will send it in an email after class. All right. So anybody have any questions, concerns, or whatever, however. Everybody did my or doing my program. Question about the program. The program do the night, right? Or when? Uh, I think I already do. Oh, Tonight, they was already yeah. turn in. Yeah. At one thirty. Okay. All right. At uh, one o'clock. All right. So, um, uh, questions. Now we can look at chapter uh five. Now chapter five, we said was dealing with what loops, right? Because uh, I mean chapter six. Uh, chapter five, chapter four, we did if statements. Now we're going to be dealing with loops, all right? Let me minimize this, uh, close this up. All right. All right, chapter five, dealing with loops. And I am in the, no, I mean, yeah, 192.3. So let me maximize this. Okay. And basically what happens with uh, loops is, it says, uh, well, the introduction of repetition structure. Okay, so that means what? We're going to perform some uh, some continuous or some some execution of, of several statements, one or more statements over and over and over and over again. To give you an example of that, it's like, uh, did I go? Yeah, I think I did that. If I do this, uh, say, uh, pound and clue, and this is just a, a quick run of it. Well, I tell you what. Let me try to find a program that uh, that I already have that I've already created, and I'll show you. All right. So let's say we pull up. Say that we pull up this menu, and I'm gonna modify. It. All right. So we pull up this menu. I'm gonna modify it. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna take everything. Pretty much everything out. I'm gonna take this information out. Okay, I'll take this information out because it's not needed. Okay, I'll leave choice because that's the menu. And I'll take all of this information here out. All right, and let's see. Just to show you. All right, and then I'll take all of this out. Just to show you the program. Now, looking at this, this is a small program, right? A small program that initialized choice to equal zero. It clears the screen. And we talked about that clear screen uh, or last, last class here. And then it's going to display this menu, OK? Then it's going to allow me to put in a choice. But now what? I put in a choice, it's just going to simply what? in the program because there's nothing else to do. I don't have a if lot I don't have if logic or nothing, correct? So let's run this. I'll put the return zero so you uh if I can tell you. All right, so let's run this. A program that was already uh, written and let's see what happens. All right. We run this, it runs one time, right? I could put in any character I want to. I'm not validating it or anything, right? So if I put W, all it's going to do is just finish the program, correct? Now, what I can do, I can say, okay, I want to be able to run this logic three times, okay? So what I can do now is I could say something like int uh, x is equal to zero, all right? So that's a starting point, okay? Say x is equal to zero. So now I got go here and say, wow, x is less than three. And you might say, well, Mr. Vessel, why you chose three? Well, from zero to less than three is three times. So you go zero, one, two, right? And then when three is not less than three, three is equal to three, it kicks out. So, but I need to, if I have a loop, 
I mean, yeah, which is, which is a wild loop. I need to embody what what I want to do, how many statements I want to execute. Okay, so I want to execute all of these statements. If let me just tab this in because some of y'all writing this code and y'all not tabbing uh, your uh, if logic. All right, so looking at this, while x is less than three, I want to do this, all of this, but I'm not finished with my if logic, I mean my while logic, because I need to do what? x is equal to x plus, that's uppercase, x is equal to x plus one. So what's happening? When x is zero, it asks if x is less than three, zero less than three. It is. I'm going to print this out. Then I increment x by one, so what? Zero plus one is one. It comes back to the beginning of the block and says, okay, is one less than three? One is less than three. Then what? It performs this logic, okay? Then it uh, increment x by one. One plus uh, one plus well, one is equal to one plus one. One plus one is two, so x becomes two. Uh, uh, two is less than three. Yes, it is. So it performs this logic, and then it increment x by one. Two is equal to two plus one, and it overrides that with three and. Uh, is three less than three? No, three is equal to three, so it kicks out and it ends. All right, so let's try. So now if I, with this logic, I have this code that was already there, valid code, and all I did was embody it inside a while loop that has what? X set to zero, then I put my condition here. This is my body, and within the body, I'm incrementing uh, x by one to get to three, all right, or to try to get to uh, greater than three. So now, if I go, if I run it, I'll move this up here, and I run it, okay. And like I said, I could put any value because I'm not value validating. I'll put one this time, just for the first time through. All right, what happens? It just what? Give me. It didn't do the CLS, so it just give me the, another another screen again, right? Type in two. All right. Notice you can't really see it. It's running fast. So see here, I got one, two. Now this is the uh, third time. So right, I'll put three here, and it exits. So how many times did it perform that logic? One, two, three. So it performed that logic three times. So see what a loop actually does? A loop act allows you to perform the same a group of statements multiple times. So you don't have to keep what? Rewriting, 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 rewriting the same exact code. You make a mistake. So you, say I would have misspelled subtraction, and I had this copied three different times. I'd have to go back and modify the word subtraction in those three different places. If I had an error, on the line that said uh, with with exit, say I had miss 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 uh, I had only one uh carrot one uh stream carrot, and then I'd have to go back on and I copied this three times. I would have to go back and make and make the changes to fix all three of those errors, not just one particular place. So that's one of the things. So now watch if I take this system clear here, and I cut it. And now I place it inside the loop. What do you think happens now when I run the program? It will do the exact same thing. Well, uh, well, scratch that. It will perform in the same manner, but each time it outputs the screen, I'll have a clear screen. Because notice, while X is less than three, clear the screen, then then display the uh the screen the menu. Clear the screen, display the menu. Clear the screen, display the menu. So let's run that one, all right? By simply moving one statement. So I run it now, and, okay, that's the first time through. Okay, put one. 
Notice what happened. It's so fast you can't see it, but it's prompting me for the next one. It done cleared the screen. I put two. It cleared the screen. Everything is in the exact same place. Now I put three. What you think gonna happen? It ends. Okay. So it was so fast you didn't really see it, but I could, I could, I could make you know what what was going on if I do that something like this. Uh, if I do something like this. Uh, I'll do menu, and then I'll output X. So you can see what actually, uh, how many times. So if I run it, notice here, X is zero. So I put in an any number in, see, it changed to one. Everything else is being printed out in the exact same place. The computer is running so fast, you didn't really even see the screen clear, but you saw this number did change. So, so it went zero, that was the first one. One, that's the second one. So, and I'll put in a number, and that's the third one. Now, when I put a number in this time, I can put one, it's not, it doesn't have a, a, any effect on the X. And when I hit enter this time, it exits, all right? Anybody have any questions? Everybody see what's happening. The loop allows it to repeat multiple times, all right? Now, that's a while loop, all right? The while loop must have some type of trigger for it to fall inside of the loop. And what I mean by that is, this statement has to hold true for me to even perform this. If I wrote this program and I set X to equal to 10, and then I got here, would it execute this? Is 10 less than three? No, so it would not even perform this. It just would end the program. So let's run it, all right? See what happened? It just ended the program because it, it started, it, it declared these or initialized these var var variables, but then it says what? While X is, is less than 10, X is, is three, I mean 10. My fault. While X is less than three, 10 is not less than three. So therefore it says, okay, this is, I'm, I'm gonna only do this if it's true. So it's false and I just do the return zero, which ends the program, all right? So that test condition has to be true to fall in. It could be uh, the number two. X could equal to the number two. If it equal to number two, what it's gonna do? It will fall in here, but when I add one to it, it becomes three, so it will only perform this logic one time, all right? Because that's why, that's because X was set to two before it actually hit this statement. And then I incremented by one, and then it kept on, then it went on. Now, uh, if I, and I'll, I'll set it back to the original state to zero, all right? If you create a while loop, and within that while loop, you do not do anything to try to increment X to get to that point, or you could have did the, the reverse. You could set X to, uh, to three and ask if uh, X was less than three, all right? So, and you go into the negative, while X is less than, well, well less than, uh, greater than three. So you can come from the negative side coming up, all right? So what I mean by that is here I'm going from zero to three, but then I can go from, uh, from a, 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 on the negative side, I could say while uh, X is greater than, greater than uh, uh, three. Let's see, greater than three, right. And then I could set X here to uh, something like 10, uh, 10. Oh, no, that's zero. 10, but then I'll do what? I'll decrement. I'll, I'll say X is equal to X minus one here. All right? So now I'm going from what? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. And then when I get to 3, 3 is not greater than 3. It kicks out. All right? So it all depends on how your mind think of things or even how you want to write the code. If you want to perform something five times, from zero to five, zero to less than five is five. From negative one to less than four is five. From one to uh, one to uh, less than or equal to five 
is five. So it's all in how you write your code, all right? So I'll change this back to a plus, all right? But then uh, x, x less than, I'll say that less than, x is less than, all right? So the thing what I wanted to show you is what you can do or what can happen is when you're dealing with loops, you can run the risk of being stuck in a loop, all right? Uh, and how many people have ever got lost driving, right? It's someone like that. It's like, man, I've, I've, I've passed this street once before. Man, I've passed this street once before. So it's like you're stuck in a loop and you just can't get out of it because in, in nothing you do going to allow you to get out of it. That's what happens uh, sometimes when you write code. When you write this, when I write this code here, setting X to equal to zero, all right? Is zero less than three? Yes. And then I perform this, but then what? I commented this out. So X is not being incremented. And then it goes back up. It's going to ask what? Is zero less than three? Yes, it is. And so it's going to keep on doing this. And it will never, X will never reach three or any value higher than three. So it will stay what? In that loop performing that, that logic. So if I run this program, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this out so you can, well, then you, you still won't be able to see it. All right, you still won't be able to see it. Uh, but if I run it here, you're just gonna see it on the screen, it's gonna be too quick. If I run it, oh yeah, you'll be able to see it because I'm prompted, all right? So it's prompting me for a value, right? I'm gonna put some, I'll put A. Well, you can see it blanking. All right, so what's happening is just continuing, but it should do the CN choice. Oh, yeah, well, what happened, CN choice, choice have what? The letter A that I put in. So I, uh, it should have stopped, though. But notice, see, it just continually, continual what? See what CN choice up here? And it just doing in a continuous loop, all right? It's in a continuous loop. So you don't want to have your programs in a continuous loop because it's going to never move to do the rest of the what? Rest of the code that's in your program, all right? You're, and uh, normally you'd have to use control keys to break out of it or either uh, functions. And I hit the stop and I've stopped, all right? So that's one of the uh, major problems with, uh, with, uh, with loops. Students either don't know what the range, like when I do, if I do X less than, less than three and somebody might do X less than or equal to three, the first one, X less than three, if X starts at zero, performs three times. X less than or equal to three, X starting at, 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 at zero, that's four times. So you got to kind of understand uh, a little bit about math and how, how that works. All right, when you're dealing with these loops and whatnot. All right, so anybody have any questions so far? Questions? All right, so that's the while loop, all right? And that will perform, all right? So now, uh, that's just like me, and I'll, I could take this out. Uh, well, I'll, I'll leave that like that. I'll take this out. All right. So if I had this information, all right, and I'll take the clear screen on too. All right. So if I write this, X is zero. If I do while X is less than or equal to eight, how many times will that, uh, how many times will it print out main, main menu? It starts at zero and it stops at eight. If I start at one and stop at eight, that's, that's eight. But we starting at zero and we stopping at eight, that's nine, all right? So if we run this, see here, if we run this, zero to eight is nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, okay? 
So we, we got to really understand what, what is happening. So if I do this, if I say, okay, while X, all right, I'll say uh, not, oh, if I can do it, not equal, say, five. How many times would it perform? Now, it's starting at what? It's starting at zero, and it's stopping at what? Five, all right? So zero, one, two, three, and four. Now, you can do, you can do things this way, but depending on what code, because you can have uh, 50 lines of code, 100 lines of code in here. Not equal five could be the value six, could be the value 100, could be the value whatever. So what happens is if somewhere in my code, I run this one time and somewhere I increment X to say, or uh, 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 declare X to be 40, it'll put the perform that one time and then kicks out. So, and the not equal, well, not say, no, it won't kick out. Because what? If X never get to equal five, it will just stay in that loop. That's my fault, right? So X will have to some kind of way get to equal five. If X never equal five, it will always what? Perform this information. So, but from zero, if, I, if I'm doing an increment by one, all right, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll do by two, all right? And I'll show you. All right, so from zero, counting by twos, what, what X will be the second time? Zero to two, that will be zero, uh, uh, two, then four, then six, then eight, which means we what? We skipping over five. So it'll never equal a five. So let's run it. And we should be in an infinite loop. See what's happening? See how X keep changing? So I'm in an infinite loop because what? X can never equal a five if I'm starting at zero and adding two to try to get to five. So sometimes those type of uh, mistakes happen too. But let's say we do this. We, we change this five to six. All of a sudden now, how many times it will it perform a uh, main menu? It will perform what? Three times, two, four, and then six, all right? Well, we'll perform it twice, really. It's gonna pop, what was zero? Then, then, well, I took something out. No, no it's there. It's going to perform at zero. It's going to perform at two. It's going to perform at four. And they're going to kick out at six. So it's going to perform three times, being that I'm starting at zero. So when I run it, I thought I clicked one. See here? Zero when X is two. And when X is four, but when I say what? Not equal six. So X was equal to six, it kicked out of that loop, all right? So there's many different ways you can do test conditions. Not equal to, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, less than, greater than. And don't forget the, uh, the infamous what? Equal to, right? You gotta have the equal equal, right? while X is equal to six. So that means the only time it's gonna, it's gonna fall into here when X is equal to six. But if it's falling into here, if I do this, and I'm just giving y'all some uh, points as to what can happen. If I set equal to X equal to six, while X is equal to six, X is equal to six, right? It falls into here, and then what happened? It outputs this, adds two, is it's, uh, eight equal six? Nope, and it kicks out. So it will not perform what? Only one time, all right? So run it, and it should perform only one time, okay? So stuff like that, you got to uh, kind of be uh, aware of what is actually happening. Because what? We still got our if logic we can use, right? Because what? I could even do this. I could even throw some if logic in here. Uh, let's say we do the, uh, set this at zero. All right, we'll say X less than, uh, let's do less than 10 this time, all right? While X is less than 10, we're gonna increment, we're gonna increment by one, 
Because normally you want to step through one by one by one. Not always. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this up. I'm going to say if X modulus, oh, well, I got that tight. Uh, well, I said modulus 2, right, is equal to 0. And I'll just try to, I'll just group it like this. If X modulus, modulus 2 is equal to 0, then I want to, that's, all, that's the only time I want to, what is this? Oh, that's good. That's the only time I want to output menu, all right, that information on menu, all right? Okay. All right, so look what done happened. I got this if logic here, but this if logic is within this while logic. So what happens? X is set to, everybody uh, kind of keeping, uh, uh, staying uh, along with what's going on. If not, you can always say something. I'll go back over it. Uh, X is equal to zero, all right? This says while X, oh, I got 19. While X is less than 10, and I got X, plus, X equal X plus one. So I will perform the loop how many times? 10 times, right? From zero, oh, yeah, from zero to less than 10. So I will perform it 10 times because there's no other assignment of X in this, in this uh, program. But look at this. While I'm performing this 10 times, I'm going to check to see if zero modulus two is zero. If it is, I'm outputting menu, all right? But if it's not, I'm just going to increment, all right? So, and then so it'd be x equal x plus one, one less than 10, yes. Is one modulus two equal zero? No. Is it zero? Yes, it is. I think it is. Because it's going to return a whole number. I think, I think that's going to be true. And then it's gonna um uh, uh it's gonna see out this and then it's gonna increment two two my is two modulus two no it's gonna be four is two modulus uh two uh equals zero yes but then is three modulus two equals zero no so you understand it's gonna keep going through like that so let's run it we run it And we won't get 10 outputs, but look, when, when X was zero, zero modulus two was zero. Zero modulus two wasn't uh, zero. It had a, a decimal value. It had, I guess, a decimal value. Then, no, that's two, uh, one. All right, then two modulus two gave us zero. Two modulus three, nothing. Two modulus four gave us our menu, which was zero. Gave us zero or remainder. Two modulus five, nope. 2 modulus 6, yes. 2 modulus 7, no. 2 modulus 8, 2 modulus 9, no. But when it reached 10, it didn't even perform it because we said what? While X is less than 10. So that's why 10 is not in here. If I did less than or equal to 10, then it would have done another loop and gave us the main menu and X showing X equals 10. All right? So you see how loop, well, loops work. And like I say, we learn the ifs. And like I say, we can have these compound ifs and whatever. Now we can have these while loops, all right? Now, with while loops, you can do them compound also. I could say while x is less than 10, all right? And then I could do something like and uh, x uh, x not equal not equal to five all right now what i happen this will perform as long as x is less than 10 and x is not equal to five so what it's kind of erroneous but it's like it's going to start at zero one is less than 10 and it's not equal to five. Well, zero is less than 10, not equal to five. Two is less than 10, not equal to five. Three is, not e not, three is less than 10, not equal to five. Four is less than 10, not equal to five. Five is, is less than 10, but it's not equal to five and both sides has to be true. 
so it will kick out. All right, so you see how you can uh, use those logical operators with while loops and uh, the for, for uh, uh, and if statement. So if we run it, it's just gonna do from zero to four. All right, see, zero, two, and four. Cause what, once X uh, became five, when it checked here, oh, kick out, okay? All right, so now let's look at the book. We look, and that's just the while loop. We got the do, uh, the do while, and then we have a for loop. So let's look at uh, our notes, and let's see what it's talking about, all right? So the note somewhat talks about uh, programmers commonly uh, uh, have to write code that performs the same task over and over, all right? And it says, uh, for example, suppose we have to ask, we are asked to write a program that calculates a 10% sales commission. I think we kind of looked at that the other day. So what happens is, uh, and you have to do it for several people, all right? What you would, want, would not want to do, you would, if you had a, a, a 50 different people you had to calculate sales commission for, you wouldn't want to have to in, uh, input the actual sales, the actual uh, formula for the, uh, for the, uh, to calculate the commission and then an output statement to output it 50 different times. You create a loop, all right? And in that loop, please enter uh, the sales. In that loop, you're gonna calculate the uh, commission rate. And in that loop, you're gonna display whatever those results are. And then that loop will continue for the next one. And you input the information, get the result. Loop will continue until it gets to the 50th one, finish it, and then stops, all right? But the logic that, I mean, not the logic, the statements that you type to perform those tasks are done once, but you perform the loop as many times as you needed it, all right? And what's gonna happen as you become more experienced programmers, uh, there's ways that where if you got a file, you can read from that file the information that you wanna pull, and you can read from the beginning of the file to the end of file. You understand? So there's a, there's a uh, just like we had, well, we didn't talk about it yet, the null terminator, there's a way to look at uh, an end of file marker. So it, that, that's a, a particular character the, co the computer can find, an uh, end of file marker. So you don't have to count. So like if you get a, a, a record from one company and you have to calculate sales, all right, you do that. Okay, in the file marker gonna count the X number of records. Then you get another company to send you their records. They might have either a larger or a smaller group of people, but it doesn't matter. Not if you read until what? The end of the file, all right? So you don't have to worry about counting it before. So that in the file marker will stop, all right? So that's one good thing. And like I say, your loop can perform until, until that happens, all right? And like I said, as you get uh, more experience in programming, you programming, you learn how to do that. All right. So, and all this telling us that the duplicate code makes the program large. So if we had to write this code fifty different times for the fifty different uh, commissions, it would make the program very large. Rather than have what the three different lines to uh, input the sales, calculate the sales, and print out the uh, commission. You know. So, like I say, it just makes it easier, all right? Writing a long sequence of uh, writing a long sequence of statements can be time com time consuming. Yes, it can take time from uh, either typing that same exact code over and over and over and over. And now, even though we have copy and paste now, which is good, but if you copy and paste something fifty different times, and like I said before, you misspell a word in the prompt. Now you gotta go back and change those words in the prompt. Uh, you miss, you, uh, you uh, typed in the, uh, the formula wrong. Now you gotta go back and change that formula 50 different times. So it just makes it harder to debug and, 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 uh, and modify the code, all right? Or if you have to make a change, you have to make that change 50 different places, all right? So if the part of the duplicated code has, has to be corrected or changed, then the correct the corrections or changes uh, has to be done uh, 
many different times. Change had to be done many different times, right? And it said instead of doing that, you just write a loop. And now we looked at the while loop, all right? And the while loop, like I said, is pretty simple. Like I said, it's three components to the while loop. And let's go back to the code. And if you kind of understand that, you, you, you're pretty much on your way. The starting point. You got to have a starting point. Int x equals zero. So now what? X is equal to zero. Zero is the starting point. So you're gonna have to declare a var value for that, that, that control variable. Okay, so x equals zero. All right, I'm gonna take all this out. Now, and which it doesn't really matter. Now you gotta have a condition, all right? Because this is part, this, even though it's not with the while, it controls what's done in the while. So this is our starting point, right? Our initialization of X. This is our control factor, all right? This is the question where the question being asked. Is X less, or do it, perform all of this while X is less than 10, all right? So you got that fact, that, that the if. Then, all right, the logic uh, expression. Then, if you, if you got that, those two, now you need something inside the loop to increment or decrement to reach that, 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 that uh, value that you're trying to test against. Because otherwise, your program will be what? In an infinite loop. Now, a simple way for me to make this exact program right here, infinite loop, I can simply do this. I could say x is equal to x minus 1. What's happening? x is equal to 0. I said while well, x is less than 10. How many different values are less than 10? If I'm taking 0 and subtracting 1 every time, I'm going to what? Negative infinity. All right? So now I'm in an infinite loop. All right? So that this is the last one. You got to make sure that that uh this statement here is trying at least to get you to this point. Otherwise, you're gonna be like I say, be in an infinite loop. Okay, you will be in, in an infinite loop. Right. So here's the declara uh, the uh, declaration or initialization of the value, the starting point. Here's our expression that we test. All right. And this is where we're gonna increment, and it could be decrement, depending on what we what what number we're trying to reach, you know, to get to. All right. So and, and, and like I said, you got your body also for your while. All right. You got your body. All right. Now, so that's the while loop. We could look at what it actually means. If you look here, if you look at this uh, small section of a program uh, uh, of a flow chart. You can have your declarations up here in x equals zero, whatever it is, whatever. Then our condition was while x is less than, we just looked at 10. If that's true, we perform in all those statements that I had. Then we're going back and well, then we're incrementing by one. Then we're coming back, I mean, coming back here is x less than 10. If it's true, performing all these statements, increment by one asking if x less than 10, and we're going to do this until x is equal to, right, 10, or anything greater than 10. And so once that happens, it, the false, it actually continues with the rest of the uh, logic in your code, all right? Executing the rest of the program, all right? So that's all that flowchart is saying. Now look at this, writing a while loop in pseudocode, all right? While then whatever that condition, the condition was what? We had x less than 10. Now, ab above that, you know that we're going to have our what? Uh, we have to have our starting point. Int x equals 0, int x equals 5, int x equals something. All right? So it can test against it. If I, had, if I didn't have any declaration of x, all right, the computer don't know that x has been introduced, and I try to say, wow, x less than 10, the computer say X is uh, not declared, all right? So you have to have X being declared, all right? You might have a student input a value, and once they input the value, then while wow, that value is not equal, whatever, and then perform whatever statements, and the in while is just the body, the uh, uh, closed curly braces. So you have open curly braces, closed curly braces, 
and that's the program. Okay? All right. It says make sure that the while clause and the end of while clause are aligned. Now, what that means, class, and a lot of y'all been writing these, these programs. It says make sure that this, the beginning of the body and the end of the body, those open and closed curly braces, are in line so that you can see. Just looking at this code, you can say what? Oh, my while statement starts here and it ends here. And it's, it's clear to see. My if statement, the body of it starts here, it ends here. So this is, uh, this is not in the if scope. This is in the while, scope of the while, but still you can see where the ifs is and you can see where the while ends. And then here, look, this is our main begin and end. So you got it to where you can understand what's, what's somewhat what's going on in your program. Rather than trying to look at it in this fashion, if I, if I do this, uh, and some students be type, be doing it, writing their code this way, and it's not good. It just makes it hard. Okay. Ah. All right. So now, looking at code like this, where do my while statement ends or begin? If I had... Uh, 700 lines of code, if I had 50 lines of code, and I had, had like uh, maybe 100 different uh, open and closed curly braces, I would know where one began and one ends, and it would make it very hard for me to understand the logic of the program. And that's all I'm saying is that you got to make sure that when you're writing your code, that you uh, write it to where it's, uh, it's somewhat understandable because you don't want to... Uh, have somebody come behind you and not know what's going on in the program or be so confused and like, well, I don't want to deal with it. Get it straight and then I'll, I'll look at it. Or you, you yourself have code that you've written uh, and then come back months later, you got to come back and modify it and you confuse yourself because everything is aligned to the left and you don't know where, where something begins and where something ends. You know, it just makes it hard. But... Like I say, does it make the program wrong? No, no it doesn't. It's just like writing a, a term paper. You can write a term paper, and all the information in the term paper is factual, and, and it's a great paper. But what? Normally, they ask you to put it in a format where it's legible, where, where you know, the table of contents is where it's supposed to be, the, uh, the, uh, the references are where they're supposed to be, so that what? It just makes for a better read, all right? And the same thing with programming, okay? Now, look at uh, this particular output, well, well, the way they had it. They had a, a, a going, a, a keep going option. Okay, I could do that in this program. And all that was was, uh, say like if I did something in here, uh, uh, I did what we had, let's say, uh, something like int, Num one and num two. All right. So say we wrote this program to where we had two numbers, where we were inputting two numbers, and each time we input two numbers, we was finding the sum of those two numbers. So I could do C out. All right, in a first number, and all right. Oh, that's wrong. All right. And then see out. I didn't see. All right, and a second number, all right? All right. 
And I could just say, uh, So you will be entering two numbers to find the sum. All right. So in a first number, in a second number, and then I could say, uh, I need it. I could do it, but I'll do it this way. All right. So I can say sum is equal to uh, num one plus num two. All right. But the thing was, I have choice up here up there, that could be like keep going. I'll just change it to keep going to kind of sh stay in line. Keep going, all right? Uh, I'll change it to char. And char is what? Single quotes, remember, right? So char is single quotes. And now I could say while what? Not while char, while what? Keep going. is equal to double equal, what I would ask? If it's equal to what? Y. If I put N, it won't go in there. So I, I, I set it to Y up here, and then what? Y keep going is Y. It is Y, so it's going to fall in here. Now, I don't need this anymore because what? What's my uh, trigger for it to kick out? Whether or not keep going is equal to Y, right? So I could do here... Uh, uh, sum is equal sum one, well, sum is equal to num one plus num two. Then I could say, see out uh, the sum. I just I could say of, uh, uh, and then I could say uh, num one, and I'll just say and num two. And then I'll say is, and then I could say sum, right? All right, and put that phone up. All right, now, so I did uh, I did that. Man, I'll tell you. They're all right. All right, so now, what happened is, I still have that, but I don't need that. I need to say what? See out. All right, see out uh, and two more numbers type Y to continue. All right, all right. And then I can do what? I'll take that off. And that I'll say, uh, here, CN, keep going. Because remember, keep going is our what? Our condition whether or not we stay in the loop. And long as keep going is Y, it's going to go back and say what? You will be entering two numbers to find the sum in the first number, in the second number, calculate the sum. Sum is equal to, or sum of num one and num two is in the sum, and then in a, uh, two more numbers, type Y to continue. As long as I type the letter Y, I'm gonna perform that loop. So now what? This while loop, how many times is gonna perform? It has no number. It all is gonna de depends on, it all will depend on the user and what they type in, okay? So let's run this. All right, hopefully I got all the errors out.
I didn't need that X plus plus one. That's not needed. Okay, let me move this up. All right, so look what it say. You will be entering two numbers to find the sum. So let's say we put 182 and 2218. Man, all right? The sum of 182 and 218 is 400. And look what, look what happens. Enter two more numbers, type Y to continue. If I type Y, enter two numbers, or you will be entering two numbers. So if I put in uh, 18 and 2, 18 and 2 is 20. So see how what? I can continue this over and over and over and over and over and over and over again until I do what? Type any other character other than Y. So like I could put in the number 3. It's a character. It's not a Y. So hit enter and it exited. So you understand that loop will perform as long as I type the letter Y. It will allow me to type two numbers, find the sum. Two numbers, find the sum. Two numbers, find the sum. Soon as I input any other character other than Y, it exits. All right? So that's how that works. And that's how the example in this book, in this particular part here, all right, where it says, uh, do you want to calculate another commission? As long as you input Y, it will continue performing the loop, all right? It will continue and allow you to input a commission, all right? So and now I just explain, you, uh, explain to you what the uh, while is actually doing. And like I said, we compare it with what? The two equals, not one, but the double equal compares, one equal actually assigns, all right? Now, notice they use double quotes. Now, if I were to use double quotes in the program here, I would have to change my program a little. I would have to do what? I'd have to say pound include string, all right? And then I would have to say string, if I could tell you, string, go, keep going. But then what? A string is enclosed in what? double quotes, not single quotes. So everywhere I have my value compared to that string keep going, I have to put it in what? Double quotes, all right? But the thing is with this, when I use string now, I could test to see if uh, keep going is a word like yes or no. You understand? So that's that's the beauty of it. I could use char for, to check a single character, or I could use a uh, string to compare uh, one or more characters. So if I run this here, I should get the same exact results, right? So if it runs, okay, I'll put in a, a 28 and, and 1, 29. I'll type Y, okay, 3 and... 39 and 28, I'll get 67. Then I'll put any other character, if anything, it exits. But now, I told you if I use string now, I could set this to equal yes, while keep going is equal to yes, all right? Then I could have to change my prompt because my prompt cannot be deceiving. I can't put Y because if I put Y only, it's going to exit. So I have to tell them Y-E-S. So they're going to have to what? Read the screen. So now what? I run it. And now it says, okay, enter two numbers. Okay, 38 and 22 is 60. Now it says, enter two more numbers. Type yes to continue, not Y. So I put in yes. And it allowed me to type two more numbers. But before, remember, I only was uh, able to do what? One character. So I'll say 22 and 11, that's 33. Now watch when I put the Y. Y is not equal to yes. So when I hit enter, it exits. Okay? So that's some of the things you got to be aware of, all right? And that's some of the programming techniques you need to, uh, to know. Okay, string is one or more character. Uh, um, char is a single character, all right? Uh, so like I said, this shows you uh, the uh, keep going. 
And again, while keep going is equally yes, it's going to keep on performing this as long as what? It, it, it perform this, and then you type in Y. Perform this, you type in Y. Perform this, you type in Y. Perform this, you type in uh, any other key, it exits. Okay? That's how that works. All right. Uh, okay. And look, this is like the flow chart of what was happening. All right? So in that instance with the uh, commission, all right, it declared the variables. Then it asked what? If keep going is Y. You told it it's Y here. So it's going to automatically be true the first time. So it's going to fall into here. It's going to allow them to uh, display this, input a sales, calculate a sale, display the sales, and then ask them the question, do you want to input uh, another uh, commission or calculate another commission? Uh, yes or no? Well, no. Yes, if you put Y, it goes back, check to see if it's Y. If it is Y, it continues on. If it's anything other than Y, it's ended. Okay, so that would be the flowchart logic for for that particular uh, program. Okay, so that's the while loop. But notice what it tells you about the while loop. A while loop is a what? Pre-test loop. Now, if we if we go back to the program, it's pre-test because what? Before I test, uh, before you can perform anything in here, you have to test to see if it's equal to uh, if if this condition is true. So it has to test this and then perform, right? If it's true, that's why they say it's a pretest. It has to be tested first, then performed. It it almost like uh, how would I say it? Uh, getting money out of the bank would be a pre. Well, I was I was at an ATM, a pretest because what you got to type in a, a your a, your pin number. So you type in the pin number. If the pin number valid, then it goes in through and do the transaction. So what? Not until that pin number is valid, it will not allow you to enter into the uh to the to the system and and, and, and get money. So that's that's a kind of an example pretest. So it got to. Check to see if this is valid. If to keep going is yes. If it is, then, then go ahead on and do what you have to do. All right? Now, if uh, we look at the notes, all right? Uh, like I say, this one just dealing with temperature, all right? And, oh, no, that, that's part of the, uh, uh, I think that's part of the, uh, the spotlight in the chapter but infinite loops we talked about infinite loops and infinite loop is a loop that does never what does never stop all right it will perform because what it will never reach that 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 condition that you're trying to get to all right so you you, you don't want to write code that has an infinite loop all right so in all but rare cases loop loops must contain must uh, contain within themselves a way to terminate. So it should be some kind of way to where, you, where that loop gives that, that, that user or have some kind of way where it can exit out. Otherwise, that loop becomes infinite, right? So it says an infinite loop uh, continues, to and, continues to repeat until the program is terminated, all right? Infinite loops usually occur when programmers forget to write code inside the loop that makes the test condition false. So just like with our first uh, code, where we had to increment x so it reached that uh, that value we trying to uh, trying to uh, perform till we get to. If we did it the negative way, we would have been in an infinite loop. All right. So you you cannot write code that that performs infinite loops because programs or compilers and even systems they do not allow for programs to just run and, and hog up memory and the computer looking at it and say, oh, well, it's not really uh, doing anything useful, so we're going to abandon it. It's uh, uh, normally a timeout or whatnot uh, before you uh, you are uh, just sitting there and watching it for days and days and days and just in front of the loop. Most times, it, it, uh, it'll bomb out, all right? Um, it tells us in here it's a good idea where you can modularize your code. And what that means is 
if we go back here, remember we wrote programs with modules, all right? So we have this code here. Now, looking at this, you can say, okay, well, this does what? Uh, uh, prompts us, prompts us for a number, prompts us for a number, add the numbers, calculate, and output. Now, being that all of this well, is a uh, is a uh, local, I would have to what? Pass those variables, correct? All right. I could write it that way, but what I'll do, I'll just make them global. Because, uh, well, I could do it either way. Uh, let's pass it. All right. So what we'll do, we'll create, we'll create a function, uh, and we'll call it uh, add two numbers, all right? Uh, we say void, uh, and then we say add two numbers. And then we want to pass uh, no, uh, num1, which is int, and num2. All right. Now, what we can do, we could just use sum in the function. All right. So we'll pass num, oh, I put int. I mean num2. And we'll say int. So that means in this function, we're passing two values. So what happens here, uh, this could come out. So what we're going to have here is add two numbers, but then we're going to what? We're going we gonna, to uh, send what when we go there? Num1. Uh, well, I'll do it this way. Yeah, I'll have to do it this way. Okay. All right, enter the numbers first. All right. Then I can say, and then I could have entered the numbers in the function, but we'll do it this way. Add two numbers. It all depends on, on on how you're doing it. No, or how's the, what's the specification? Num two, all right? Because we could have had it to where the numbers were entered into the function, and they would they would not have to be. Uh, 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 well, you'd have to pass them, but you'd be pass, you'd have to initialize. So there's some things that would have to be done. So now, so what we can do, we could take this out. All right. We're only taking this out. All right. And then we got this void add two numbers. And that would be int and the we can say n1, int, n2. And two. So all we're doing is we, we rename our uh take this in we rename our variables in our function. That's all we did. All right. But what? Num one value gonna be passed to num n one and num two value gonna be passed to n two. But then what? Now the only variables known in in this function is what? N one and n two. All right. So we have to change this accordingly. But then what? We have some here that's not being used, so we're going to have to say int sum, all right? Because sum is unknown, because we need to take uh, sum out of here. Okay, take sum from here. All right, so now we've written a program, and look, we, had, we got this information, which uh, says to enter two numbers, and we got the information to what? Continue if we want to continue. This don't need to be in here. It could confuse. All right. So what happens is now what? What the the a process of adding two numbers is in a function. I could have a process to uh, multiply two numbers. That could be in a function. So you see how we can, we can take all the code out and in that while loop it just got the actual function. So that's what it's talking about. So let's run this. I think I have everything. Okay, I got my prototype, my call, and then here's my definition. All right? So let's run this. All right? And it should run exactly the same way. All right? If there's no errors. Let's pull this up. Uh-oh, got an error. Oh, main reference. Uh, in, in, uh, this ID one status. Undefined reference. Add two numbers. Okay, I might have I might have wrote the I might have spelled it wrong. A D D two. Oh uh, yeah, two numbers. All right. Yep. Yeah. Add two numbers. Uh. Add two numbers. Add two numbers. All right. So let's run it. 
So what I did, I had a misspell uh, function name my, in my definition. So here, add two numbers, 882 and 99. It gives it. Now, enter two, enter, uh, two, two or more numbers, type yes to continue. All right, Y-E-S, see? Enter two numbers, uh, 29 and 83, gave us a value. I'll type B, and we out. Programming executed the exact same way that it did before, minus what? Calling a function. Now, you might say, well, this vessel was the purpose, why, whatever. It all depends when you start working for a company, they might want you to have all of, of certain type processes called from a function okay so you got you should learn how to use functions sometimes it make it easier what to divide up the what the uh responsibilities all right so you looking at it like well i could write the code and i could do this and i know how it's not all about you it's not all about you know whether or not they trust you or whatever it's just that many times they'll do things like that especially when you have large projects they, they, they delegate it out, and then they bring it all back in once everybody complete this segment of it. So it's nothing about you not being able to write it or whatever. Like I said, a lot of times it deal with uh, the uh, software engineering side and trying to produce something in a quick, uh, in a, a timely manner. All right, so uh, anybody have any questions? All right, that's the uh, while loop, all right? We got the do while. Okay, and we we'll look. We can look at the do while, and we have the for loop. All right, and I, we'll look at the do while. But the for loop, with the for loop, I can do this and say for. I try to say int, and I'll say y equals zero, y less than uh, three, y plus plus. Now, all of a sudden. Now I'm controlling how many times I'm going to perform that loop. With a for loop, normally you know how many times you need to perform something or you have a condition in here, like, like if you're dealing with a string, you can uh, do the length of a string and say I want to perform uh, uh, that loop from the beginning of the string to the end of the string. So you can do things like that. But the for loop, normally you have a number or a count as to how many times you're gonna perform something. So with this, now it took the while out, so I could I could even take uh take this out now, all right? Because this becomes irrelevant, all right? When I, I take this out, and my loop will perform three times. How do I know that? Starting at zero, y less than three, zero, add one, one, add one, two, add one, three, up. Uh, Three, if three is not less than three, three is equal to three, it kicks out. And this here tells it how to perform. Increment by one. If y is equal to y plus plus, I mean y plus plus is the equivalent to saying y equal y plus one. Now, if I do minus minus, now I'm, I'm doing the negative. So I'm going the negative way. So y is zero, the next time through y is negative one, next time negative two, now I'm in the infinite loop. Okay, so uh, class is pretty much over, but I'm gonna run this, and uh, then you should be able to take your test, and uh, and I'll try to set this other and send that. Inf I'll send the information to the others who may not have come to class, and make. Uh, hopefully, you sign the row. I'm gonna run this, and this should run three times. All right. So this is the first time. I in a one, 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 one. All right. Next time, two, 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 two. Third time, three, 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 and it ended. So with a for loop, you could specify the number of times, whatever. So if I told you I wanted you to uh, print out your timetables, well, your 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 uh, ones ones timetable from from zero to ten using a for loop. You, you could use a for loop to go from y equals zero, y less than or equal to 10. And each time you go through, you, you'll say what? You could have, uh, if I say the ones timetable, you could create a variable 
uh, cost of variable equal in the one. So the first time through y times zero, I mean, well, yeah, y times the constant value, which was, uh, with, uh, uh, time one is zero. Then y was one, one time one is one. Then uh, two times one is whatever. So you can do that going through that loop and bam, it's done. Okay? Anybody have any questions? Any questions? Excuse me? Uh, I can't hear you. Um, there's some stuff in the chat. Oh, let me, yeah, I, I never even, uh, let me, let me click on it. Let me see something. Where's my chat? Where's my chat? Where is my chat? Hold up. I know. Like, see how we you have oh. one? Yeah, I got one. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, uh, I might, I might have to. Let's see, see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Oh, no, yeah, I, no, that's not it. That's not the chat. That's just participants. Let's see. I had chat once before. No, 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 no. Let's see more. Chat, 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 chat. Uh, let me see. Oh, chat. Chat have 12. There we go. All right. Uh, don't know. Can't open the you, you can't open the assessment? Yeah, one is called like assessment, but what is like, what is what is giving you? Nothing. It's tell like, like let me see. It tell this quiz is part of a unpublished module oh, okay. uh, and it's module. not available oh, yeah. yet. Right, that's in that uh that uh that uh exported imported stuff. Okay, so yeah, right here. So now it should be available. I don't want all of them. Okay. Oh yeah, I can save the quiz right now. Right. Okay. So we're supposed uh, to do this one today. Yeah. When, well, when is the do what due date I had? The seventh. I'm. A, I'm. A, I can increase. It increment. says do April. Yeah, to go ahead and do it. Because you're gonna take it again, but I need to see if it's recording the information. If it's recording the information, then I know it's working okay. If it's not, I need to redo it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So just take it and do, like, do your best, but I'm gonna give it again at toward the end of uh, the sem at the end of the semester. All right. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Uh, what another one? Uh, same. Can't. Okay. Uh, quiz. Okay. I forgot to sign the roll. Who is that? Chase Roberts. Chase. 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 Oh, chase. I forgot to sign the roll too. That's the long the one. Chase. chase. Where, where you normally would sit? Uh, like. Facing you left side, like the way you face left side. Oh, against the wall? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not all the way in the back, though. No, like third row ish? Yeah, yeah, I think I remember. Yeah. Okay, Chase Roberts. Who else uh, said that? Brianna Smith. Okay. And who else? So that's the only two. Uh, let's see. Uh, I think. Can't see. Oh yeah, I would. Yeah, I didn't have my chat open. Okay, why are we taking quiz on the same topic as the test? Because normally I'd have the quiz before the test, uh, and I didn't post it, so I just went ahead and put out the the uh, quiz, you know, so you could take it. Yeah. All right. Because normally I, I should have put out the quiz before, like say when I announced the test, give you just prep questions and then you would have been able to take the test. All right? Any other questions? Um, yes, sir. I'm sorry to ask, can I have an extension on the programming assignments that were due what, tonight? What happened? Uh, work has been very busy. Okay. I'm, All right. Where we I at? understand if not. No, like I said, I don't want to fail you, but I want you to do my work, right? A absolutely. <laughs> Right. So what I'll do what tonight? Uh, okay. Let's see. Um let's see something. Uh I'll change it. What I'll do is uh and Thursday. What I'll do, I'll make them do Friday. And hopefully you have enough time by Friday to do all of you. I'm gonna just make it do for everybody, all of them. Thank you. For Friday. And um Save that one. Uh, let's see the next one. 
So you want us to do uh, both those quizzes, the the chapter four ones, and then well, well, assessment? one of them, one of them is is like a bonus quiz. I've read the chapter. No, 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 no. I know you're right. That is two of them. Yeah, one is an R, and one is another one, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just go ahead on and do them. Cause did I extend the dates on those? Yeah, April eleventh. Yeah, because I think what happened with the test, it was like you couldn't get in. And I think one of them had respondents with it. Oh, and some people who joined the uh, class late, uh, I, I created a, uh, an announcement that uh, has the uh, link to uh, download the responders. Because I, I went to a webinar at, at 1 o'clock right before class, and it said that you have to download a specific uh Go to use a specific URL to uh, load the responders, and I had to get it from Canvas, and I posted it, and uh, Miss Zoop, Miss Zoop says she used it and it worked. So go to that uh that announcement. I'll probably email it too, cause some people might have missed class. Uh, I'll I'll email it, but you gotta uh the first link is a video that you can watch. The second link is the download. What it is, uh, Responders is a browser, but it's just a shell of a browser that allows, puts you in uh, a test mode. And what happens is uh, uh, you ha you're going to have to exit out of Chrome and I think any other uh, browser and uh, web software that you have. And then when you open up, uh, you're going to install Responders. It's going to be an application on your computer. Then you go to the windows and, and open and start that application. It's going to bring up the browser and then it's going to have canvas at the top and it's going to have all of the, the quizzes that you could take under the responders. All right. Now it might even have all quizzes. I don't know. Cause I never really gotten to it, but only, only lockdown. Only thing I have in lockdown browser for you to take is the test and, uh, and or those two. That's the only two. Now, Another thing for the finals, uh, the responders, and I think Ms. Ms. Uh, Zhu said she had an issue with the uh, webcam. Uh, with uh, with uh, the finals, you're going to need a webcam. All right. Now, the thing is, they want us to proctor it, but I'm going to make my exam to where you could take it at any, you know, any time for that final week. So, Unless we have one test date, and then I could tell everybody. Well, I still can't. I don't know if I'll be able to zoom in on on each person and watch everybody. And I don't know how that works. It might have to be one at a time. But to to eliminate that, you do it with the camera. It'll be saved in a video, and then I could always go back and look back and see what comments that they had, whether you know you you cheated or whatever stuff like that. So. That that's how we'll do that for the final. But hopefully you have the internet, you have the webcam, you're gonna have your two opportunities to take the uh final. Uh, also I'm gonna put out a practice final prior to that. You know, for that that uh before the uh, final week, I'm gonna put out all tests and all quizzes where you can take another time, and then I'm gonna put out the uh and all at the same time I'm gonna put out the practice final. All right. Thank you. Uh, and Mr. Uh, oh, yeah, Mr. Lowry. Okay. Uh, this is the last one. Uh, what, what, what was that date? Did I change the date already? Was it Saturday? Was it Friday? Yeah, I think I changed it. Yeah, okay, it's done. All right, so that's been changed. So work on your programs too, right? Now, make sure, uh, make sure you get them right now, all right? Try to work on them, get around. Don't cheat, you know. Don't copy word for word. I've been kind of seeing some some programs look very similar. So they think so. And then sometimes some people try to do it similar, and they left off some stuff. When that and that part of my other classes, because I never graded this or something, or something here in a while. All right. Uh, any other questions? Now, uh, I'm not going to assign them. But if we look at, uh, no, not this. If we look at uh, this, look what this says. This is our program five, number one. Write a program using a for loop. Remember, we just did that for loop. That will loop how many times? Three times. How you loop it? It doesn't matter. Zero to three, 
three over to less than three, one to less than equal to three, uh, 10 to seven, whatever, you know, 10 to greater than seven, whatever. Input integers, uh, in a, in an integer value each time, all right? While looping, calculate the sum of the numbers in it. Now we're gonna look at that and because uh, there's something called uh, accumulation, an accumulate uh, a value that, that accumulates. And I'll, we'll talk about how that's done and whatnot. But I'm just showing you so that you might have, you have an idea, of, you know, thinking of what you want to, you know, how you're going to go about writing that program. Okay. And like I say, the other one is uh, the same thing, but you're using a what? A while loop. Same program, but using a while loop. So the logic should be somewhat the same, but just the, how you put in the condi test condition and whatever. And then the third one is basically the same, but it's using a do while, all right? And that's the three programs for that, that chapter. Now, the thing is though, when I, when I give these assignments, students sometimes turn in the wrong sign assignment for the, the uh, particular, uh, the wrong assignment in for a particular assignment. And I have to give them a zero, because what they'll do, they'll, they'll turn in assignment two for one, and two for two, and two for ten, and three for three. So it's like you just turned in two assignments, one of the same, and one of a, 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 a duplicate. So you got to make sure that you turn in the right assignments at the right time, you know, in the right uh, slot. All right? So uh, are there any other questions? Any other questions? No questions? No uh, yes, yeah. says, can we do a bonus menu assignment? Oh, a bonus menu assignment. Oh, we want that one? A bonus menu. I see here I got bonus program allows the user to input 10 in. Da, 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 da. Bonus menu. Bonus menu. Bonus menu. I'm going to have to write it. I'm going to have to rewrite it. Bonus menu, bonus menu, because uh, da, 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 because I want you to use modules. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I'll think of one. Yeah, I'll think of one. All right, so we'll do that. I'll create one. All right. Everybody got that? I'm, I'm gonna create a bonus assignment uh, to where you can uh, you'll be able to write a menu. And from that menu, make your choice, and then you return back to that menu now, and that menu should continuously loop until you're ready to exit out of that uh, of that that uh, that menu, saying I don't want to do it anymore. And I might do something uh, like say I know uh, we've done something with add and subtract and whatever. I might do something like create a menu that will allow a user to uh, something like. Uh, calculate the area of, and then I might say square for one, rectangle for two, circle for three. You, you know what I'm saying? Something like that. And now you might say, well, Ms. Best, I don't know the area of a circle. Well, research it, right? But at the same time, do your modules, and at the same time, do your loops to make sure that uh, you, you're going to continuously loop until you want to quit or whatever. All right? So I'll, 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 I'll write that up and everything so that you'll have, and it'll be a little bonus, all right? Yeah, for for the chapter four, program one, um, it says, if passed output, you have successfully that's passed it. class. That, I, that's all I wanna output. Some people try to give me all the other stuff and, and, and go, and I, sometimes I take off. Well, all I want you to output is, you have passed or what? I think it's. Let's go back to it. It doesn't that, say you have you have failed or anything, but I but I. Ah, uh, right. In. Because what? Say you. At the end of the semester, and it just it's just however whatever they ask of you, that's what you do. If you were trying to determine whether or not you pass my class or not, you might sit down and write code and say, "Well, let me input these three scores. I only want to know if I pass. Boom, boom, boom. If it's greater than seventy-five, pass. Bam, hit enter." And if it say pass, you know you pass. If it don't say anything, what? You know you failed. Right. You, you understand okay. what I'm saying? So, so right. I should go take out the part where I put that. Right. Correct. Right. Take that off. That. 
Yep, when you say take... you mean you don't want any output when you fail. Right, correct. Because if you notice, it didn't ask for any. Okay. Okay. Right. I see. Only, yeah, just follow it. And see, and, 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 and another thing, when you write code, just you follow the instructions. And when you get with a company, sometimes that that's they you gotta follow what they ask for. Now, I'm not saying not to do what you just did, like, oh uh, well, I noticed uh this program, it doesn't print out whether or not they fail. Yeah, ask them, but sometimes they, they have it written or have instructions for a particular purpose. You understand what I'm yeah, saying? See, see, right. I just did it, and I just put a comment saying that. I didn't say it, but I did it anyway. Right, 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 right. Yeah. yeah I, Cause, I that. Right, because, see, your module might be used for something. And like I say, now you don't output fail, 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 fail on, on, on a screen. Like, well, you might have a public screen. You understand? And now you, you're displaying yeah. people being – it could be anything, you know. It could be whatever. Yeah. But all I ask for is put out if, – if they pass, then simply put out that. You have passed the class, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and, and the other questions. In Chapter 5, like I say, we just do a do-while loop, a for loop, and a while loop. Okay. You no, know, and like I said, basically the code will be exactly the same. You're just manipulating uh, the loop parts of that. Yep. Oh, yeah. So I need to add these people, two people, to the uh, Roberts and Smith. Okay, yeah, those two to the uh, to the uh, to the class. Yep. Anything else? I think I'm good. Okay. Yeah. No, like I said, I changed that date to what Friday, Friday night. Uh, I appreciate it. Oh, no problem. Work's been nuts. Yeah, I, I can believe that. And say, and some people probably out, some out sick, some out whatever, and it makes it. You know, you have to switch with responsibilities. I understand that. Uh, so, one last question, like for yes, the assignment. If I yeah. resubmit, you will see the last yeah, one. Yeah, right? it, it's going to show. What happens for me, if you submit five times, it's going mm -hmm. to show the very last one first. Okay. And it also shows the date, you know, so. But it okay. shows the, the very last one. And that's the one I'll grade. Yeah, the okay. very last. Right, 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 right. I always, I always grade the latest submission. Yeah. Yep. Wow. No, yeah, this is one. Yeah. So. And the four are those three program, we can use four. We can use the if, right? If use else, what? something. Like yeah, you two. have to use the if, right, right, right. Okay, if, like four, no well, right? Well, it's chapter five, right? Yeah, that's chapter five. Right, 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 right. All that's chapter five. Okay. Yeah, that's chapter five. Yeah, right. Yep. That's chapter five. You so, shouldn't have to. You shouldn't have to use a a, a while or anything in in these. Um, yeah. So for the for the lockdown quiz, it, it'll bring us right to it, like to the canvas thing. And oh no no! Oh, uh, you're gonna have to go go to your announcements. You in canvas now? Yeah yeah, I'm at the announcements. Go to announcements. In announcements, when you go to announcements, you're gonna see that they have two links. All right. When I click, I'm gonna click on it too. All right. You're gonna have uh, two links. The first link is a video. All right. It just show you a video of uh, the uh, the uh, lockdown browser. This link here, this is specific to BRCC. What yeah. happens is, yeah, specific to BRCC. Anybody from another institution can't use that link, and what they they won't, they won't. It'll be like what you just did if you tried to download it from the internet yourself. It won't work. So once you download this, what happens is, uh, let me minimize this. And mine won't work. But if I go here and go to Responders, the lockdown browser, it's going to tell me I got to 
uh, exit out or whatever. But see, it got canvas, and then it's gonna have the different uh the the test or quizzes that I can take. But then I can't add any more tabs or anything. I'm just locked into this browser. But I'm gonna have the links from the BRCC canvas. You yeah. Got it? So right. I downloaded it from that link. So so why when I open that and close out everything, it'll show me the quizzes I gotta take. Correct. Right. Because right. cool. if you click now, you're probably gonna get this error here. That message: You must close out the following programs. Right. So you gotta close all all that out, and then once you do that. Then you uh, then you would be uh, able to open up. Well, it's gonna open up similar to this, where you're gonna have the module, whatever, or whatever. Or, or I think it's just gonna show all of the available quizzes, and you'll be able to click on them. Oh yeah. But the only two I think I ask for responders is test four and uh and uh uh, uh and or and and or and or those two. Okay. Right. All right. And that should work. If you got issues, though, let me know. Email me and let me know. But Ms. Ms. Zhu, she was having issues. One time she emailed me like like about eight times in a row. I mean, man, I was like this morning, uh, sometime this morning or midday. And then I uh, I was I, 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 I got into this, uh, this uh, webinar, and that was something that I caught. They said specifically for your, class, your school, you got to go inside and, and download from there. So okay, so that that must be it. Sorry about that, because it's still like one p.m. I'm like ready. Uh, what's due at one? What's due at one, Mizu? No, I said sorry about that. Oh no, no, oh, I see what you're like saying. You're trying to hurry and get it I'm because like, it was due. I'm yeah, but ready. nah, but don't never Emergency. worry. <laughs> right, but don't never worry about that because just like with Mr. Lowry, like I say. I don't try to hold you to, oh, well, this was due then. And, you know, if it's something on my part, hey, I messed up at your time. I'm going to give you a couple of days or whatever. I'm not, I don't try to be a stickler to, to whatever because I know things do happen. Yeah. yeah. But don't not tell me, though. Good, it's a good thing you told me, though. But, yeah, don't, don't be where you just don't tell me. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but everybody, y'all, uh, y'all, the 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 mini videos are they helping? Yeah, they do help. I I use a couple of them. Okay, all right. And then too, sometimes the mini videos end up being thirty five and forty minutes. I'm like, man, I guess I'm gonna have to try to. But if I if I break down the uh, the if I try to reduce the amount of words I say, you might not get the gist of it. So I, I don't know. Uh, I try to I try to make it to where you can understand, and I try to teach programming to where you see some of the ins and outs, rather than try to just teach you straightforward. This is how you do it. I try to say, okay, but if you do this, you might see X, Y, Z, or you might run into this problem or whatever, so that you can be aware of some of those things. Yeah. All right. And so hopefully we'll get through the semester and and, uh, and hopefully y'all learn the learn the material. Yeah, everything will be okay. So Miss Zhu, you you see, who else got an issue with with a uh, with a uh, a camera or or, or or webcam or camera or internet or something for the final? Because I know Miss Zhu, Miss Zhu, you you need you need a webcam. Uh, no, I mean I I I can use another laptop. laptop? Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. I yeah, just I can... like I like use my desktop. I know. Yeah. Some laptop. people have certain comfort zones. Yeah. You're right. Yep. Some yeah, people have certain. That one is like my yep. book. It's yep. like different system. Right. It's and you like so some weird. people like to take it take their test in the bed with the laptop. You know, it's just their comfort zone. You know. And some people like to, you know, be outside or, you know, or in a setting where they chilling without drinking coffee or whatever. <laughs> it just, everybody got their own different feel. Yeah. 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 But that's the information. And like I said, y'all could read through that, look at it and whatnot. Cause uh, there is, uh, uh, let me see if I could go to it. Not zoom lockdown in lockdown. Uh, there, there's some, there's some steps y'all gonna have to go to through before, before. Let me see. 
it continue. Before you actually uh, actually use the web camera, there's some web camera checks and whatever. Let me see if I can get to it again. Uh, I'll get, I'll just, I'll click on one of these. These, I won't put, put it on there, but I'll go to settings and this is how we set it up. And I'll say required and then I'll go advanced. Well, I'll go here. Uh, where is that? What monitoring, monitoring. Yeah, require monitoring. But then uh, continue. But look what happens. There's a, a a webcam check, okay, and and I just left everything on there. Uh, and additional instructions. They talk about what, what whatever about, about the respondents and whatever. Guidelines and tips. Student ID. All right. Normally they'll ask you to take your ID and put it in front of the webcam to make sure that's you. Uh, well, student. What I'm saying ID. Student photo. So like I said, you'll, you'll be in front of the camera and there's a, a button, an icon, a, a button that says click to take picture. And then show ID, they'll ask you to put your ID in front of the webcam and I think it take a picture. Environment check. The environment check, it just asks you to take the webcam and if you got your computer, just take your computer and pan it on the desktop or, or the desk or wherever you're taking it so they, they will see that you don't have any material or whatever. All right, and then they got a facial uh, detection check. I might take that one off. I don't know, but what I think what what well, what that one I think does it. It makes sure that you are paying attention to the and look like it. I can't check it. That you're paying attention to the screen and not like say turning and listening to somebody tell you something and then you coming back and doing whatever. So. Uh, so those are the different things in, in uh, but that'll be only for the final, all right? That'll be for the final. Uh, yeah. And then it says somebody I could prevent students from starting the exam if they cannot uh, cannot be detected during startup sequence. Uh, notify a student during the exam if the face cannot be detected. So it's like if, if you taking a test and you look off, you know, respondents probably can probably say, hey, what are you doing? Or, hey, you know, I cannot recognize. I don't know what it'll do. I've never used it, you know, so I just say. But that that's that's pretty much of what, what you have to do be, before you take the test, that particular test. Does it need a student ID or just a regular ID? Because I don't uh, have a student ID. Well, it, I don't No, no, no. I think it's just an ID to prove that that's you, period. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that, that from what, cause see, I could click on it. Oh, uh, you might not see it. When I click preview, uh, see, it just asks you to take a picture. See, take a picture, and that's it. Yeah. So if you do take picture, all right, and when you show what picture you've taken and content, see, that's all. Yeah. Okay. All right. And you're gonna take a picture with your hair. Sorry, one last question. Like yes, for that chapter for program one, uh -huh. can we like use the for statement? Like, cause we learn the chapter five for statement. Ah, uh -huh, no, cause I'm gonna just no. be looking for ifs in that state. Okay. It's gonna just go through it one time. You want to do a four to read in three three scores? Uh huh. Yes. Yeah. No. Uh, no. Just go ahead on and do uh uh num one, num two, num three. Okay. And I know, I know it's dinosaur, and, and like I said, you all to me, and that's just to me, you all, this class is kind of, uh, how would I say, advanced in that you all are doing a lot of things that the 193 class kind of have issues with. You know what I'm saying? So you all are doing real, real well. You know what I'm saying? You all doing good. Yeah. You all doing pretty good. Yeah. But don't 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 use it because I'm gonna just take it, run it. Okay, put it in, put it in, put it in. Okay, it works. But okay. when you when you okay, start so adding just regular like he inputs right, three, there you go. three there you go. tasks, right. Right. right, right, right. And I and I know it's hard. You know, like man, I, it'll work it's better. Just, and that's and that, but that's hard, good. It's complicated. The what? It's complicated. Right. It's not hard. It's easy, but it's complicated. You right. you, you maybe mistype something and uh, it's. <laughs> Just get the arrow. <laughs> right, yeah, I see what you're saying. Yep, yeah. Yep. But yeah, just do it that way. And like I say, it's good that you recognize that hey, there are techniques that we can use to better it, which is good. I like that. You know, that is good. You know, because you always want to get better at something. You always wanna 
okay, I can do this to do this. I can make my program more efficient, right? Rather than have one, two, three variables, you can have what? Only one, one num variable. And then what, what, what you can do, like I said, we do, we're talking about, what well, we'll talk about that, uh, that, uh, that calculated value. What, and what happens, the only thing with calculated values, well, not what it is, calculated values, computed, uh, uh, accumulated values. You have the uh, variable on both sides of the equal sign. Remember how we had x is equal to x plus 1? Every time that, 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 that statement is executed, what is happening to x? It's changing by 1. It's increment. That's a calcul that's a, uh, accumulated value. So if we had sum and you was doing your loop inside that function, we'll have sum is equal to, to score plus, well, sum is equal to sum plus score. First time through, zero is equal to zero plus score. Next time through, uh, whatever the score was the first time is equal to whatever the score the first time plus this score. So that would increase, increment, so accumulate. So it's like accumulating a value, right? So you have less variables, which, which allow your program load faster, run faster, and, and, you know, and ex, you know, execute faster. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, let me exit out of this because I don't want that on that. Then I'll put some on there. Then I'll put it on. They took it off. Yeah. Yeah, so like I said, on the responders, I got, uh, oh, I did put it on the, I put it on the name variable. I don't know why. But that, that's, that's an old quill, I think. Or is it? It should be an old quill. But yeah, the test for and the and on. Name variable names and then on. Right and on. Oh, yeah, here we go. Right here and on. Right. But if you look at this one, this is the final. It got the web, the lockdown browser and the webcam. The, none of the rest have that. Yeah, so that's the lockdown and this is the webcam. Okay, both required. Okay. All right. So, uh, any other questions? Questions? No questions? All right, class. So I'll see y'all on Thursday, Thursday. Okay. All right. What today is Tuesday, right? Tuesday. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. I'll see y'all on Thursday. Have a good one. Stay safe. All right. You too. Thank All you. right. Have a good one.